concentration section of chapter 13. This one is kind of the most detailed and for some of you may be the most difficult. So let's get started. And what we're looking at is solution concentration units. The easiest of which is mass percent. Mass percent is um, basically simple. It's the grams of the component over the total grams of the solution times 100. The trick is your units must be the same. You can use grams, you can use kilograms, you can use pounds, whatever, as long as you have the same. Volume percent is similar, except you're using a volume. Again, it has to be the same unit, so it's either milliliters to milliliters, liters to liters, and it's a percent, so you take and you ratio it and you multiply it by 100. Now, the next one is something that everybody looks at and goes, well, that's not very common. Actually, it's very common. It's very common in your medicines, and I highly recommend you go read your medicine cabinet because what you'll often see is a mass volume percent, and you'll see this um, is sometimes it's um, grams per liter, so that looks like a density, but it's not, and um, and or you can have weight volume, and that's often what you'll see on the medicine cabinets and again it works the same way it's the grams usually per milliliter and usually but not always they use this with 100 milliliters of solution so these are all the percentages then the next one we move to are ppms ppbs and ppts now notice they only differ by the numbers here uh, this is a million so it's six digits this would be a billion and this would be a trillion. Again, it works the same thing as a mass percent, except here you're using smaller species. Now, mass percent is used when you have numbers that are comparable. But if you're talking about things like air quality and water quality, you're talking about contamination that's usually really small. Doesn't mean it's not significant, either toxic or beneficial. That's irrelevant. But you have PPMs, PPBs, and PPTs because these are, are much smaller units. So the other trick is, is that notice you're multiplying by a factor of 10. So if you have one... PPB, then that is a thousand PPMs. So sometimes you'll hear things and they'll talk about air quality and if they're talking about smog or ozone, sometimes they use PPBs and sometimes they use PPMs. Now, if you were comparing apples to apples, 1,000 ppm's is one ppb. So sometimes they'll use numbers that if they either want to scare you or make you feel better, then they'll use these values here. So you need to be very careful to see what's going on. Okay. The next stat is... Um, the units involving molarity. So if you're looking at molarity, that's moles of component per liter of solution. Remember we did that back in chapter four. We did mole fraction in the gas law chapter. And um, occasionally you'll see mole percent, but we don't typically do mole percent. So mole fraction is moles of a component over the total moles. Now, the trick to mole fraction is, if you remember, it's less than one. So if you have a mole fraction value that's one or greater, then there's a math problem because mole fraction is small. The next one is molality. Remember back, if you were in my class, I made a big deal about you writing molarity 
or molar concentration with a capital M because molality is the little m. They're not the same thing at all. They're related, but they're not the same thing. Molarity is moles per liter. Molality is moles per kilogram of solvent. Now, the important thing on that is, is that if you think about it, which one's more accurate? It's actually molality. Because if you think about it, if you'll remember any of the volumetrics that you ever used, they had a temperature label on them. You might not have noticed, or you might have noticed, and nobody said anything about it. But the reason for this is that with temperature, think about it, things expand, contract, so liquid volumes were going to vary based upon the temperature. So your volumetric glassware is only accurate for the temperature that's designated. So what this really means is that molality is the most accurate because it's based upon mass. However, when you go to lab to make a solution, this is easier to use when making solutions, use when making solution. So, molality is better, or excuse me, I shouldn't say more better, it's more accurate, whereas molarity is easier to use in lab. And the last one is something that is actually pretty commonly observed if you know where to look. And it is normality. And it has the big symbol N. Now normality is related to molarity by the number of equivalents times molarity. So that brings us to the, what is an equivalent? Well, one mole of equivalents, or one equivalent mole, is whatever donates or is one mole of the item. Now the problem is, is the item can vary. So for example, a lot of times it's used with acids. So if you look at it, one molar of HCl is one normal. But one molar of H2SO4, since it has two protons, is two normal. So one mole of phosphoric acid, or actually we're using molar, one molar phosphoric acid, which is H3PO4, is three equivalents. That's how it works with acids and bases. If we had a compound that was sodium sulfate, and we were doing normality in sodium ions. Then if this was one molar, then it's two normal. If you're talking about chromium and it giving up six electrons, then we're talking about one mole of electrons, so that would be six normal. Because here you're looking at it with respect to, that's what our WRT is with respect to, um, moles of electrons. So it's giving up six moles of electrons, so therefore it's six normal. The other way that I like to explain this is, is if you have a dollar. If you have a dollar in, bill, in a dollar bill, that's one normal. If you're talking about a dollar in quarters, that'd be four normal. If you're talking about a dollar in dimes, that's 10 normal, and pennies would be 100, and nickels would be 20. So normal is strictly a function of what will donate one mole. So that's how we look at that one. Now let's try to put these together and look at a simple problem, and believe it or not, this is a simple problem. What are the molality and mole fraction of all species present in a 268.7 milliliter aqueous solution that is 1.21 molar sodium chloride and 
3,9 molar phosphoric acid if the density of the solution is. Wow. Okay, this is actually not as bad as it appears because molality is moles per kilogram of solvent. And they're in the same solution, so once you find the kilograms of the solvent, you got it for both of them, and you can find the moles of each component. And mole fraction operates on the moles over the total moles. So again, you, that's actually not that bad if you look at it. So don't, when you look at concentration units, don't freak out, go, okay, what are we looking for? So there are a variety of ways to work this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to stack it. So we have three ingredients in our solution. We have sodium chloride. We have phosphoric acid. And they said to be an aqueous solution, so that means your third component is water. Well, so we want to look at each of these species, so we're going to need the moles of each, and we're going to need the grams of each. So the question is, how do we determine that? Well, we're given the molarity, so for sodium chloride, if we want the moles of sodium chloride, we're going to start with our amount, which is 0.2687 liters of solution times our concentration, which is 1.21 moles per 1 liter of the sodium chloride. Okay, so if we stop there, we're going to get 0. 325127 moles. So if we're listing them over here, and you don't have to rewrite them, but I'm trying to make it pretty for you. 325127. And we know we need to get the grams so we can look up the molecular weight. So one mole of sodium chloride is 58.5. 443 grams and remember all we did was we looked up the sodium and the chloride so we get 19.00140 grams so we'll put that over here 19.00140 grams now somebody is probably looking at this and going wait we have the moles we don't need the grams Yes, we need the grams because the only way to get the water is to get rid of the sodium chloride and the phosphoric acid. And the easiest way to do that, because one of them is a solid and one of them is a liquid, is to use the mass. So here we go. We're going to do moles of phosphoric acid. So we're going to start again with our amount, 0.2687 liters of the solution. And we know our solution is 0.39 moles of phosphoric acid per 1 liter of phosphoric acid. So that gives us a whopping 0 0.104793 moles. Again, we want grams. So one mole of phosphoric acid is equal to 97.99518 grams. So we end up with 10.26921 grams. So I'm going to go ahead and put that over there, 10.26921 grams. And... The moles was 0 0.104793. So that brings us to the water. So what we need to do is find out how much is the water. So in order to do that, we have to have the grams of solution. Well, we know we have 268.7 milliliters of the solution. And we're told that the density is 1.06 grams per one milliliter. 
that gives us a solution grams of 284.822 grams of solution. So we want the grams of water. That means we're going to start with the 284.822 grams, which is the solution. We're going to subtract out the sodium chloride, which is 19.00140. And we're going to subtract out the phosphoric acid. So that is 10.26921 grams. So we end up with 255.5514 grams. It's a four of water. So over here we have 255.5514 grams. So we're like, oh, we're done. Because we'll need that when we do the molarity, because we'll need it in kilograms, which is 0.255514 kilograms. So we're done. Nope, we need the moles, because remember, we need the total moles. So we need the moles of water, which we'll start with our 255.5514. Grams of water, we look up the calculate the molecular weight of water, and there is a periodic table posted, so we get 18.016 grams of water per one mole of water. So we end up with the uh, moles of water being 1847 moles. Okay, so if we look at it, we know that for our mole fraction, we're going to need moles of component over our total moles. Okay, not times 100 or anything. And then for our molality, we're going to need moles of component over kilograms of solvent, which in this case is water. All right, so notice I didn't put them in order, and that's fine as long as I've got both of them, um, and it's really well labeled. So I'm going to put the mole fraction here, and I'm going to put the molality here. Now, you're not actually asked for the molality or the mole fraction of water. So for sodium chloride, we're going to get our moles of water. Uh, sodium chloride was just 0.325127 moles divided by the total moles. Okay, well, let's come over here and look at the total moles. I should have done that on the way. So my moles are 0.325127. This is sodium chloride plus phosphoric acid is 0 0.104793 phosphoric acid plus our water, which is 14.1847. So our total moles come out equal to 14.61462 moles. So we would put that in 14.61462 for H3PO4. And because your calculator has a inner function in copy, I like to just set them all up and then do the math all at once. But you can do them in any order you want. It's 0.104793 moles divided by 14.61462. And then down here, it's moles of components. So we've got the 325127. Keep losing that 7 there. And now it's the kilograms of water, which is 0.2555. I think fives, four fives, one four. And over here, it's 0.104793. 
divided by 0.255514. So when we actually do the math, we end up with a mole fraction for water for um, sodium chloride equal to 0 0.02247 and my molality is 1.2723 for phosphoric acid we end up with a mole fraction of 0 0.0071704 and point four one zero zero six six. So these actually end up being the values that we asked for. And if you look at it, yeah, there's a lot of work, but it's really not that hard. It's just a matter of series of steps. I'll tell you a trick. When working these concentration problems, if you find the grams and the moles of every component, and if it's a liquid, you need the volume then you've got everything you need at that point to solve for any concentration. So we're going to look at the um, PPBs, PPMs, etc. And sometimes you'll see them all capitalized. Sometimes you'll see them all over uh, lowercase. Sometimes you'll see them start capitalized and in lowercase. It doesn't matter. So the question is, is we want to calculate the PPBs of cadmium ions in solution. So PPBs are going to be the grams of cadmium over the total grams times 10 to the 9th, because it's PPBs. If it was PPMs, it would be 10 to the 6th. Okay? So we're told that we have 2.8 milligrams in 250 milliliters of solution. Wait a minute. Our units have to say, be the same. We can use milligrams or we can use grams. I've already gone ahead and told you to put it in, in grams. And I'll tell you why. So we know we move it three decimal places. So it's 28 grams, 0 0.0028 grams. And if you remember, the density of water is one gram per one milliliter is the density of water. <clears throat> so what that means is if we have 250 milliliters of solution and all it is is cadmium and water, then that means that we have 250 grams of solution. Now, if you want to add in the cadmium, you can, but you're dealing with 250.0028 which is the equivalent of having $100,000 and somebody giving you 10 cents. It doesn't have any effect, so we're going to ignore this part. So we'll put it over 250 grams times 10 to the sixth, to the ninth, sorry, PBMs is 10 to the sixth. And the trick is, is this is multiplied, this is divided and this, you do not use scientific notation. You put it in your calculator. It's times 10 to the 9th. And so we will end up with 11,900 PPBs. Okay? So, if you look at it, that's a lot. But if we were to use PPMs, that's 11.2 ppms. And so it's the exact same number, but it looks smaller. So when somebody starts quoting numbers to you, be very, very careful as to what the units are because they can easily mess with you in terms of making a small number look much, much larger or a large number look much, much smaller. So here's another one. If a solution with a density that is found to be PPMs with respect to iron to sulfide, sulfate, no, that's sulfide. How many grams of iron to sulfide are found in the solution? So basically what we need to do is we're given the PPMs. So we know PPMs is going to be the grams of ferrous sulfide over the total total mass 
times 10 to the 6th. Okay, we know that this is 246 ppms. We are looking for the grams of iron 2 sulfide. So that's our unknown. So we have to be able to calculate the total mass. Well, if we have 125 milliliters of the solution and we know that the density is 1 milliliter is 1.42 grams, then that will give us the grams of solution which is equal to 177.5 grams. So we put in our 177.5 grams. Then we'll do the algebra. You'll divide by, whoops, 10 to the 6th, and then multiply that by 177.5. So your grams of iron 2 sulfide comes out equal to 0 0.04367 grams. So you can work this forward or you can work it backward. It really doesn't matter. It works both ways. Okay. So the next one we're going to work on is a much more complicated problem. And even though it appears much more complicated, it's really not. Because what we're doing is, is we're taking something that we see in normal everyday life and we're going to work it back to concentration units we associate excuse me with 1212 okay so we've got a bottle of wine and so we're probably going to need another page for this but right now we'll sit here and look at it so sometimes it helps because it's word problems so I know I have 12.5 percent ethanol by volume I know I have tartaric acid in amounts of 0.6 grams per liter. We're given the density of ethanol. And we're told to calculate the concentration of ethanol in wine in terms of mass percent. So I'm going to call ethanol, E-T-O-H. When you get to organic, you're going to call it that a lot. E-T-O-H. We want it the mass percent. We want the molality, we want the molarity, and we want the mole fraction. Okay? And then we want the tartaric acid, and I don't want to write that, so I'm going to say TTAA. I want the TTA, TTA tartaric acid, tata for now, if you're a Winnie the Pooh fan. So we want the normality. We want the mole fraction. And we, whoops, let me give myself a little bit more room here. We want the PPMs of the tartaric acid present in the wine. Okay. So the bottom line is, is that if we look at our units, we're going to need the grams in the moles of each species and then ethanol we're going to need a volume other than that we're missing one thing what's the third thing we need to find this for water as well because what we're told is is the wine contains ethanol and tartaric acid well the rest of it's got to be water if you can drink it as water. So what we're going to do is try to find all those items. Now, because of the way I set this problem up, I'm going to need a little more room. I can easily do this on one sheet of paper. I just can't do it on one air sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and add a page here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the problem. So we're going to work with ethanol tartaric acid and we're going to find the water okay so first things first we have to have an amount now in the previous problem that I gave you with the sodium chloride and the phosphoric acid I gave you an amount if an amount is not given 
then you assume one. Because it doesn't matter whether you have uh, a little or a lot, you, assume, you have to have start of, with an amount, so assume a volume. Now, I'll give you a hint. It, numbers that are easy to use are 1 liter, uh, 100 milliliters, if it's very small amounts, 10 milliliters, etc. Now, because we listed the tartaric acid uh, is listed per 1 liter, then I'm going to assume that we have 1 liter of wine. Now, it doesn't matter whether you assume 1 liter, whether you assume 100 milliliters, 50 milliliters. Believe it or not, um, it, un, unless you're asked for a, something associated with a particular amount after you've chosen your volume, you're going to get the same answers, assuming you do it right. So let's start with what we have. Okay. So I like to work things left to right. So let's start with the one. So we know that we have 1,000 milliliters. And we were told that the ethanol is 12.5% by volume. So, that means 1,000 minus 125 milliliters, because 12.5%, if you've got 1,000 milliliters, is 125. So, we're going to assume that we have 875 milliliters of water. Okay? That being the case... We could go ahead and, since this is water, we can go ahead and work on the moles. So we know that there are 18.016 grams per one mole of water. So then that means that we have a whopping 48.5679 moles of water. Wow. Okay, that's a lot, but... We have designated there are only three things and they're not there much. So I'm going to draw a line so I keep my next species different. So I'm going to work with the ethanol. So we already determined that we have 125 milliliters of the ethanol. And we know that we're given the density. So one milliliter of ethanol is 0.79 grams of ethanol. So that means we have 98.75 grams. So that's our first number. Then we can keep going it on, carrying it through, and we know that the molecular weight of ethanol is 46.068 grams per one mole, which gives you a whopping 2.1436 moles of ethanol. All right, so here with, with the ETOH, we have milliliters, we have our grams, and we have our moles. So we're done with it. So the tartaric acid, we know that we are given 0.6 grams in one liter. So if we're assuming one liter, we have 0.6 grams. Then we have to define the molecular weight of tartaric acid, which is 150.088 grams per one mole, which gives us a whopping 0 0.0039976 moles. So if we look at it real briefly, we'll go back and we're looking for mass percent. So we have the total grams. We have the moles, we have the kilograms of water, what we have the volume. So what we don't have is the total moles. So let's go back over here and look at it and we need the total moles. That means that we're looking at the moles of water 
plus the moles of ethanol plus the moles of tartaric acid. So we had 48.5679, 2.1436, and 0 0.0039. Nine seven six three gives us a whopping fifty point seven one five four nine eight moles. Okay, so I think we've got everything we need to work with. So I'm going to if assume that I have it written on a piece of paper so that I don't have to keep flipping back and forth. So when we go to work it, our mass percent of ethanol is we have our mass of it, which is 98.75 grams, over the total mass of the solution, which is 974.35. Did we get the total mass? Oh, we didn't do the total mass. We did the total mole. So the total mass is the added together so we had where's our water we had um actually messed that up here so if it, the density is one gram per milliliter we have 700 and 875 grams there our ethanol we had 98.75 grams and our tartaric acid, we had 0.6, so we ended up with total solution math of, uh, mass of 974.35 grams. So I had that, so times 100, so we can 10.1298%. Our molality is moles of ethanol over kilograms of solvent, in this case water, which means our moles are 2.1436 moles divided by 0 0.875 grams of, excuse me, kilograms of water, which gives us 2.4498. Our molarity is again 2.1436 moles, but is per one liter. So we get 2.1436 molar. This is molal and this is mass percent. So if you'll notice, the molarity and the molality are close, but they're not the same. They get closer. Uh, the more dilute the solution is, the more concentrated the solution is, the farther they get away from each other. So here we're 2.1436 moles divided by the total moles, which we found as 50.715 moles total. And again, there's no times 100, so it's 0 0.04227. Whole fraction okay and here we have and I'm gonna skip molality and you know, normality I'm gonna come back so here we would need the moles of tartaric acid which is 0 0.003998 divided by the total moles which is 50.715 so that would give you 7.88 times 10 to the minus fifth Mole fraction for tartaric acid, our parts per million is we had a total of 0.6 grams over 974.35 grams times a 10 to the 6th. So that gives us 615.795 ppms. So that brings us back to normality, which is remember number of equivalents over liters so 
or we can do normality is molarity times the number of equivalents. So the trick is, is if we look at tartaric acid, is H2C4H4O6. Remember, if the protons are written out front, those are acidic protons. We have two of them, so it's two equivalents. Just like sulfuric acid, phosphoric had three. So the way we could do this is two equivalents times molarity, which is your moles. Let me do this up here, two equivalents times my moles, which is 0 0.003998 moles divided by 1 liter, which gives us a whopping 0 0.0079953 normal. Okay? Now, if you'll notice... It really didn't take us that long to do. It takes me longer to do it and then talk it through than for me to actually do it. So as long as you find the grams and moles of each component, don't forget whatever the solvent is, and you do um, the milliliters for anything that's liquid, then you've got every piece of information you could possibly use. Now, in this particular case, you know and I know that wine is more than this. However, I want to limit the possibility. If you were actually to go into food sciences, you might be asked to determine the concentration of everything in the bottle of wine. Okay? So, if you think this was fun... Um, this is nothing compared to the big problem that we have. Oh, there's our work. Here's my Diet Coke problem. And if you look at the, this problem, it's basically defining Coke as only having these four items. Now, you know and I know it has more than this, some of which are proprietary, but... The point I'm trying to make is, is if you can go read any label, you can determine the concentration of any species you have present. And this is the type of problem that I'm going to ask on the test, and you're going to be asked to work it and write in the concentrations. If the concentrations don't match, then I have to go back and I have to look at your work to give you partial credit. So as bad as this problem looks, it's really not. And there's always explain any assumptions as you go. And here we're given a set amount. So if you look at it, all we want to know is we want to find the grams and the moles of each component and milliliters for phosphoric acid because they're giving you phosphoric acid of a density which tells you it's a liquid everything else is a solid so we're gonna go ahead and work this problem and um, let me add a page here um, and I'm gonna just jump forward real quick I have a couple of these worked on video I think I'm up to two video solution problems I may be up to three and I know that there's another one where the answer key is just posted so don't freak out uh, you will have several of these to work on and practice but it all boils down to the same thing so here let's do the work for the Diet Coke problem and I'm just gonna write the important information I have well, I don't care about the 12 ounces. So I have 355 milliliters of Coke. And it's composed of water, phosphoric acid, aspartame, which is NutraSweet, tame, and caffeine. Caffeine is probably your friend. Okay, so 
we're told that it's present in 1.94 grams per can. A spartane is 187.5 milligrams per can. And caffeine is 46.5 milligrams per can. Okay, and we're told that the density of the Coke is 0 0.9, whoops, 0 0.917 grams per milliliter is our density. Remember, water, if we need it, is 1 gram per milliliter. 1 milliliter. 1. Okay, and we're told that density of phosphoric acid is 1.874 grams per 1 milliliter. Also, on problems like this, I tend to give you the molecular weight, so it's 97.994 grams per mole. Aspartame is 294.312 grams per mole. And caffeine is 194.196 grams per mole. And water is 18.016 grams per mole. Okay, so having given you all this information, all this information is given. I got nothing else. I want to find everything. Okay, so I tend to start with the solution. So I know my volume is 355 milliliters. I'm given a density, so it's one milliliter is 0.917 grams, which means I have a whopping 300, well, I don't know why that didn't want to write, but we'll try again, 325.535 grams as our massive solution, okay? Now, we'll probably come back to that for water, but I want to go ahead and start on the phosphoric acid. We're told that we have 100, or excuse me, 1.94 grams per one can. We're assuming one can. I will rewrite that. Assume one can. So, we're given the molecular weight. So, it is... 97.994 grams per one mole so I have a whopping 0 0.019797 moles of phosphoric acid so I've got my grams in our my moles but phosphoric acid is a liquid so if I have 1.94 grams and I use the density which is 1.87 grams per one milliliter then I also find out that I have a whopping 1.035 milliliters of phosphoric acid per can. Okay. Now I'm going to work with aspartame. And I was told that we have uh, 187.5 milligrams. So that means I have one, 0.1875 grams per can. And I know that the molecular weight of spartame is 294.312 grams for one mole. Now notice I'm keeping my species in order so I don't have to keep writing moles of aspartame, grams of aspartame. Because I'm keeping it all in one line. You can work left to right in a row, horizontally or vertically. It doesn't matter. So my moles of aspartame are 6.371 times 10 to the minus 4th moles. So then that brings us to caffeine. And we're told that the caffeine is 0 0.0465 grams per can. And the molecular weight of caffeine is 194.196 grams per one mole. So I get a whopping 
times 10 to the minus 4 moles of caffeine. So I've got everything I need except my water. So remember, if you take the grams of solution, which in this case is Diet Coke, minus the grams of phosphoric acid, minus the grams of spartame, we'll call that ASP, minus grams of caffeine, then you're left with the grams of, co of water. So we have our mass of solution is 325.535 minus phosphoric acid, which is 1.94 minus the grams of aspartame, which is 0.1875 minus 0.0465 gives us 323.361 grams of water. So if we use our molecular weight, 18.016 grams per one mole, then we are left with 17.949 moles. So... If we have the total moles, which is combining all of them, so that's moles water plus moles phosphoric acid plus moles of aspartame plus moles of caffeine, then we end up with 17.969674 moles. Okay, so the only other point we have is, is we are asked for the normality of phosphoric acid. So if we look at phosphoric acid, it has three acidic protons. So it has three equivalents. Okay, so... I think we've got the total mass, we've got the total moles, we've got the mass of the solution. I think we've got everything we need, so we'll go back in here and we'll look at what we're asked. Okay, so volume percent, that would be 1.035 milliliters time, divided by 355 milliliters times 100, which would give us 0.2915%. Our mole fraction, um, let's try to finish it all out all the phosphoric acid. I'm not sure why everything got mixed up, but it did. So let's do the molality, which is the moles, which is point, um, 0 0.019797 moles, divided by my kilograms of water, which is 0 0.32. 3361 kilograms of water. Okay, so when we run this, we're going to get 0 0.06122. Our molarity comes out to be 0 0.019797 moles divided by our volume, which is 0 0.355 liters, which gives us 0.05577. So notice both our molarity and our molality are low, but they're comparable, 0 0.06 and 0 0.055, which rounds to 0 0.6. And then our normality is the molarity times three equivalents. So since we already have our molarity, we've got 0 0.055. 7, 7 times 3, that gives us our normality of 0 0.16731. Okay, so if we go back up, we're missing the mole fraction. This is a spartane. Spartane. So when we do our mole fraction of a spartane, 
it's going to be a small amount, 6.371 times 10 to the minus 7th, divided by my total moles, which is 17.969674, which gives me a mole fraction of 3.5. 4, 5 times 10 to the minus 5th, which is very small, but the aspartame is very small. Now, I should have left a little more room. I'll, I can do the mass percent of the aspartame over here. So it's 0 0.1875 grams of aspartame over the total solution, which was um, 325 0.535 grams times 100. So our mass percent comes out to be 0 0.05760 percent. And then our PPMs, which is our last one, is the grams of caffeine, which is 0 0 0.0465 grams divided by our total mass, which again is 325.535, times 10 to the 6th, which gives us 142.84 ppms. So while the room was a little tight, the bottom line is we have all the definitions, we have all the values they are given here. And remember, you have a several other problems, whoops, um, that you can work. Let's go back. Um, we have the fluoride rinse. I have a lemonade problem. I'm not sure which other problems I have posted, but there, I'm pretty sure there's one that, that's up that's just got the an extra problem and then the solution posted. So you will probably have one of these like this on the exam. Uh, the problem is, is as we do it online, it's a little bit harder to compartmentalize. So I'm going to have to work on how I present this. But let's assume that you're going to have a problem like this on the test. And as I said, there are a couple more to work. And for some of y'all, this is the easiest problem we do. For some of you, this is the hardest problem we're going to do. So take your time, work several of these out, and see how they're alike not how they're different and you'll be good to go.